Have you ever wondered how successful people always seem to follow through? Maybe you've had moments in your life where you followed through, but you just weren't as consistent as you wanted. My name is Joe Moffat with Master Life by Design, and in today's video, what I'm going to share with you is how to follow through on anything consistently. Before we jump in, I want to let you know, after doing this for a decade, doing over 17,000 coaching calls one-on-one -on -one with clients all around the world, you start to see patterns take place that most people don't necessarily see. So in today's video, I want to be able to share with you the biggest distinctions I've seen that allow people to follow through on anything that they want, but being consistent with that. The biggest reason people don't follow through is they hold this belief of, let me do this later, right? They have this belief that's going to actually hold them back. If you believe that you could do this thing later, are you going to do it right in the moment when you know you need to? More than likely, no, right? Or the other thing I hear around a lot of the stories that people say is, oh, well, let me knock this out. And that's when something pops up, like an email. Has that ever happened to you where an email's popped up or maybe you got a text message and all of a sudden you're sitting there like, oh, it's only going to take a minute, right? That's the story that you tell yourself. So your beliefs and your stories play a major role. If you tell yourself it's only going to take a minute or, you know, let me get to this and knock it out really quickly, that story is going to stop you from what you're doing and not allow you to follow through through verse what if you had the story of let me get knocked what I'm doing out then I'll get to the email or to the text message what if you played that story what if you played the story of hey I gotta follow through on this because well this is what's most important on my calendar and this is gonna make me even more productive today so you gotta look in, into what your story is. What is it that you tell yourself in those moments where you're not following through, right? Maybe it's like, oh, I'm bored. That's a big one I see a lot of the time. Or the story is, oh, what's another story that I hear a lot? You know, not just bored, it's like, oh, well, what else can I do? Or, you know, I'll get to this later. That type of, those types of stories hold you back. Instead, I hold a belief. This is one of the beliefs I would invite you to adopt, but it's allow me to follow through on anything. And that is when I find myself tempted to move on or to stop do doing what I need to do and not follow through is once this is done, it's done forever. Like that's the belief that I hold in my mind is like, once it's done, it's done forever. Well, you don't get it, Joe. I'm punching numbers into a spreadsheet all day long. Yeah, you're right. But once you punch that first one on the spreadsheet or on that list in, it's done forever. Now you go on to the next one. I get it. You have another page you're going to do and another page after that and 50,000 pages after that. I get it. But once it's done, it's done forever, right? For example, maybe you're thinking about an audio book, right? You have an audio book and you want to be able to complete that so that you have a goal of 50 audio books in one year. And then all of a sudden you get recommended a book that they're like, oh my God, it's so good. Or maybe your mentor online says, you know what, you guys got to read this book. I just finished it. It's going to help your income go through the roof. And you're like, oh, I want to follow. I want to jump into that. Instead, you're like, you got to hold that belief of once it's done, it's done forever. So that's the first one. The second one is you have to know your goals and you got to have your why right in front of you. See, if you have your goals right in front of you, like as I'm recording this, my goals, my vision board, they're right there on my wall, right? I see them every time I go to make this video or any video for you guys on this channel or even a Facebook Live, I see my goals right in front of me. I see my vision in front of me. But most importantly, what gets people to follow through is they actually know why they're doing what they're doing why they're going after that vision. So it's not just enough just to see your goals, right? We definitely want to see them, but we also want to know why. And the clients that I found that find, and myself personally, that follow through consistently are the ones that right before they jump into a task, whether it's writing an email, whether it's doing a workout, whether it's making cold calls, whatever it might be, they actually sit down and they read out. They have it written out or they read it and they say, you know, why are they going after this goal? Why are they doing what they're doing? And they get into it where it's so compelling, so juicy. It like turns all circuitry on right because when you're connected or what we would call in the coaching world associated when like you're kind of like this is it and you're feeling that all of a sudden you want to follow through you want to you want to complete it even if it's boring even if it's a mundane task even if it's a challenge for you or even if you're fearful when you have that why and you feel it it's emotional within you you follow through 
99.9% of the time, you follow through. So you gotta get in state, right? Like you gotta know what you want and why you want it, but you gotta be in state when you're going to take on a task or when you're going to follow through on something or know that you're about to begin something that you usually don't follow through on so that you can follow through. I know that's a lot of follow through language. So anyway, that is what you need to make sure that you're checking in on is, am I in a great state? Do I know why I'm doing what I'm doing? Am I connected with it? If you're not connected, you definitely wanna be connected. You wanna feel it, you wanna own it, you wanna be like envisioning it as you're going through your task. That's the, first, that's the second thing. The third thing is you have to del eliminate distractions. You have to eliminate the distractions. Why? Because distractions are always gonna come up. Now, I let off with changing your beliefs and your stories because let's be honest, distractions are always gonna pop up all the time. And so it's not like we could take every distraction in the world away. However, we do wanna change our mindset and how we approach the distractions if we give life to them or if we don't, if we feed them energy or if we don't. But you wanna do your best to eliminate the distractions in you. So you might turn your cell phone off. You might close your laptop. You may close the windows. You may turn everything off. Right? If you're looking to do a meditation, you don't want your cell phone on. You don't want your email notification popping up when you're with your computer open if you're trying to focus and get present and get centered, right? If you're making cold calls, you don't want music on. You don't want to be texting someone. You don't want to have the TV on or anything like that. You want to eliminate as many distractions as possible. I have clients that literally leave their phone in another room if they're doing something where they needed to like just really focus in on. I have clients that they don't even have a laptop in there. Whatever it is, they look at, we look at, what are distractions that could come up for them or what are the patterns of distractions and how do we eliminate them. That's the biggest thing is if we can reduce the probability of these distractions showing up, then the likelihood of you falling through consistently is going to go through the roof. So eliminating distractions is number three. Number four is get a product, a productivity planner, right? You, we want to make sure that you're as productive as possible. Well, I remember before when I first joined network marketing, I had a leadership conversation or a leadership event and this two-star general from the United States Marine Corps came in, Ura, to all my Marines out there, and he was talking about leadership. Well, he had an hour to speak. Well, 90% of his talk was about calendar planning and being productive. And I just thought that blew my mind because he basically, leaders get clear on what they need to do and they know why they're doing it. And their calendar's planned out. So that if things show up, they know this is the most important task at hand. So I have a productivity planner that I refer to all, all my clients that need one. I share it with them and I'll share it with you. I'll put it in the description below. I'll give you a link. I think it's in anywhere from like 20 to 40 bucks, depending on you know when you're buying it, if there's a discount or whatnot. And so yes, there is affiliate commission with that, but I want you to know this is what I refer to all my entrepreneur clients that are making six, seven, eight figures that use this and they're pretty successful with it, right? Why? Because they're clear this is the most important task or these are the most important tasks at these times, they know why. But when other things come up, they don't need to worry about them unless it's a life or death situation. Like, let's be real, right? Like if your dog's dying for some reason or got hit by a car, like that might take precedence over the email that you need to send. Hopefully that doesn't happen to you. But get clear, get a productivity planner so that can help you before the day starts. Do it the night before. I always suggest the evening before because sometimes we wake up late, the alarm doesn't go off, or you know, the kids are up in the middle of the night and you're exhausted. And if you know already what you're doing the next day, it's a win for you. So number four is get a productivity plan. Number five is take short breaks and really make it fun, right? So I always have clients, you know, after about, studies have shown that after about 60 to 90 minutes, our productivity starts to go into tank, right? It starts to plummet. So by taking a five minute break or 10 minute break, you can go for a walk, get some water, eat something, right? Stand up, stretch, move around. I always encourage get outside if you can, depending on where you are. If it's, you know, Denver in the middle of the winter, you might not want to go outside. Outside. But if you're in Florida, you might want to go outside in the middle of the winter because it's like 70 degrees out there. So anyway, with that being said, how to make it fun. 
Because what happens, I find a lot of the time, is most people are just bored. They don't follow through because they need some variety. So they get distracted or they allow distractions to take place so that that can give them some variety. So what if we beat it variety to the punch? What if you're working on a task that might not be exciting, like, I don't know, punching some into the computer or writing emails? How can we make that more fun? What if instead of having a chair, you had like one of those BOSU balls, right? Where you could sit and you can balance on it, right? You can move, you get core stabilization. Or maybe you got a stand-up desk like I'm using right here. And you can be able to stand up and then halfway through, sit back down. Or another one that's really works great for me and my clients, but I love is I put music on. Like having fun with music and obviously having music change every three, four, or five minutes really brings out variety. So if you have a special playlist that brings you or pumps you up, you may want to play that while you're doing the opportunity or whatever you're working on, whatever opportunity that might be. Now, I get it. Sometimes you can't play music in certain situations if you're on conference calls or whatnot, but you got to find how can you make it fun? Because when you can do that, you can have variety to it and you don't have to have that same, like it's... It's boring, right? Like imagine sitting in your house Monday through Friday and you never left, right? And that happens to me in the window, winter sometimes, right? Like my highlight of my day is I gotta go to the mailbox. Like that's my highlight. So anyway, how can you have variety to it? How can you make it fun, playful, so that you follow through? All right, guys, I just shared with you five ways that you can follow through on anything consistently. And so go ahead and implement them. I'd love to find out. Comment below. Let me know what's one thing that you took from this video that you can actually implement right away. I'd love to know. I'd love to comment back, get to know you a little bit. And hey, let's be friends on social media. Go on Facebook, Joe Moffitt. Follow me there on Instagram, The Joe Moffitt. And you can also follow Master Life by Design on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and I'll see all of that. So if you guys want to comment, love to get to know you, be some, be friends on there. But most importantly, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit that uh, subscribe button. If you want to have videos coming at you three times a week in the areas of personal development, relationships, business, finance, this is a channel for you. So go ahead, hit that um, subscribe button and then share this video if you know someone that can use it because we all get stuck at times. We all have these little challenges that we want to overcome. And in fact, if you feel like you can't overcome them on your own, go ahead in the description below. There's the one-on-one -on -one coaching application. Fill that out. We'd love to have a conversation with you, whether you want to work with me, my wife, or one of our coaches on our team to be able to help support you in creating that breakthrough so that you can master life by design in any area of your life and go to that next level. So with that, I'm going to encourage you guys to watch this next video on how to become an overnight success because if you can follow through consistently on anything, then we want to have success. So how to become an overnight success, I think you'll find that video very interesting because, well, let's just say you got to follow through in order to be an overnight success and you got to be able to do it consistently. So check that video out. With that, my name is Joe Mava with Master Life by Design. Have a great one. See you guys.